friends, welcome back to Bible Box. This will be our last and final episode before the Christmas holidays, but I'm so excited for them. Can you wait for Christmas? Oh, I don't think I can stand it. So far, we've learned a lot about the Christmas story. We've met Mary and Joseph, the baby Jesus. We've also seen how God shared the new good news of Jesus' birth to ordinary people like the shepherds. But there were some other folks that already had an eye out for the coming of baby Jesus, and they came from a really long way away. For today's reading, we're going to be using the Growing in God's Love Story Bible. If you'd like to get your own copy of the Bible to follow along at home, just click the link in the description box below. Let's get started. Visitors from the East, based on Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Imagine getting ready for a long trip, one that would take months. What would you pack? In this story, some people go on a trip that took years. They weren't even sure where they were going. In a land east of Bethlehem lived some magi. These people studied the stars in the night skies. They looked for new stars too. One night they saw a new star, a bright star. They believed that this star was a sign that a new king was born. They packed their camels for a long trip to follow the new star. About two years later, they arrived in Jerusalem. They went to the palace and asked King Herod about the star and the new king. King Herod didn't know anything about a new king or where this baby could be found. He called together the priests and his advisors. The priests said, prophets wrote that a baby king would be born in Bethlehem. He would be king of the Jews. This must be the reason for the star. Hearing about a new king did not make King Herod happy. There could be only one king in the land and he was the king. But King Herod was clever. He asked the Magi to follow the bright star until they found the new king. When you find this king, said King Herod, come tell me where he is so that I can honor him too. The Magi followed the star. In Bethlehem it led them to a house where they found Mary and the child Jesus. The Magi knelt before the child and they gave him presents of gold frankincense, and myrrh. In a dream, God told the Magi not to go back to King Herod in Jerusalem. So they went home a different way. For today's craft, we're going to be exploring a little bit more about the Magi, or otherwise called the wise men. Let's head on over to the craft table. Welcome back to the craft table, friends. As always, make sure that your work surface is clean and has something protective over it. And make sure you are also wearing protective clothing, like me in this apron. You could also wear clothes that you won't mind if they get a little dirty. Today, we're going to be working with glue. So if you need to pause the video in between steps to wash your hands, that's just fine. Click the pause button and I'll be here ready to go when you get back. Let's get crafting! Welcome to the craft for December 20th. Inside your envelope you'll find the following supplies. A whole bunch of pieces of tissue paper pre-cut. Four black frames that show different scenes from the Christmas story. Four pieces of clear acetate and the Mod Podge that we saved from a previous craft. 
you're also going to need to grab the foam brush that was included as a supplement. For this craft, we're going to be making a little lantern that we can put in the middle of our table for Christmas. We're going to start with one of the pieces of clear acetate and one of our pieces of black frame. The black frame is going to be attached to the clear acetate and we're going to put individual pieces of tissue paper down to make stained glass. For this one, I'd like to show a sunset pattern in the background going into night and then a star glowing in yellow. So I'll pull out yellow, a little bit of red and pink, some purple and some darker blue. Those are the colors that I'll use on the acetate. Let's start there first. Take your Mod Podge and put a little bit onto your acetate. Spread out the Mod Podge with your brush. You want to create enough of a surface that the tissue paper will stick to it. Remember, Mod Podge dries completely clear, so the light will be able to come through nice and clearly. Using one sheet of tissue paper at a time, Plan where you'd like to put it and place it down. We don't want to overlap too much. The more you overlap, the darker it's going to appear. So try and only use one sheet at a time. You can tear off bits to make smaller pieces if you need to cover more in one specific area. I keep my frame handy so I can line up and see exactly where I want to put the next piece.
that's starting to look really nice. Once you're happy with the way your stained glass pattern looks, put a little bit more Mod Podge onto your brush edge. and gently dab over top. On the back of your frame, apply a thin coat of Mod Podge. Be gentle, some of these parts are very, very thin. Now place your frame down on your piece of acetate. Line up the bottom and the top. Press down firmly to adhere the entire pattern. You'll notice that there are a couple of spots where we have some around the edges. We can take a pair of craft scissors and just gently cut those off. As you can see, you can slightly see my hands through. This means when we put a candle behind it, you'll be able to see the light coming through, just like a stained glass window. I have a candle here so you can see the effect. See the light coming through? This will be really pretty when we turn the lights off totally. Let's do the rest. Next, I'm going to do my shepherds and my angels. For this, I'm gonna put a little bit of green behind my shepherds, since they're on the hillside, some blue in the middle, and the angels will be in gold and orange. Just like before, start out with your piece of clear acetate. Put a little bit of Mod Podge down. Whoops, that's a bit much. I might take a little bit of that off. And spread over top of your entire piece of acetate. Using your frame, eyeball where the frame is going to sit so you know where to put your colors.
this stained glass piece is turning out really well. How's yours looking? If you have an edge like this where there's an overlap, you can always dab, dab, dab and put down a little bit more Mod Podge to hold it in place. little dabs and little brushes. Looking good. Once you're happy with the placement, flip your card over and apply the Mod Podge to the back just like before. You might get a little bit on your hands, but that's okay. Mod Podge washes off. These little parts are really hard to cover with Mod Podge, so I just dab it with my foam brush so I make sure I get Mod Podge on each of those little sections. Once you've completely covered it in Mod Podge, lie it down and make sure you line it up with the acetate. Press firmly to adhere to the acetate. And there you go, another stained glass panel is finished. Let's cut off the excess. Looking good. We'll set that aside. Up next we have Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. I would like to make my baby Jesus look like he's glowing with the light of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to do a, a row of yellow followed by a row of light orange and then gradually transition through pink into purple and darker blue as we go up towards the sky. Now remember, these stained glass windows can look however you want them to. That's the great thing about these pieces. There's no specific pattern, and if you want yours to be all one color or to look like a rainbow, you can do that. Just like before, start with your acetate and cover it with Mod Podge.
put your frame over top just so you can eyeball where the pieces should go. On a cleaner edge, use your scissors to cut the pieces in half. You may have to apply a little bit of Mod Podge as you go. Mod Podge doesn't dry very quickly, but it does start to set fast, and it might lose a little bit of its stickiness if it's left out too long. should do nicely.
another one finished. <laughs> Trim off the excess and then put it aside and let it dry. One more left. This one is the star over top of Bethlehem. What colors are you going to pick for this one? Mod Podge first. This one's going to be a little tougher. I'd like to make my little tiny windows be yellow, but I want the rest of it to be a different color. So I'm going to gently line it up and remove a little bit so that I can get to the part with the windows. Then I'll use my yellow and just put a little bit of yellow down so that my windows look like they're glowing at night. That should be good.
That looks just about right to me. Yep, time to apply my glue. And my last piece is finished. Now once you've trimmed off the excess from this last piece, go ahead and take a moment to wash out your brush and your hands. We're going to let these pieces dry for just a little bit and then move on to the next step, assembling them all together so that you can have your candle. Once your pieces are mostly dry, it's time to put them together. Now, I did do one additional step, and that was to cover the entire front in Mod Podge. You don't have to do that step if you like the matte look, but I kind of like this shiny finished look, and the Mod Podge acts as a sealant, making sure it all stays together. So if you wanted to do that step, you certainly could, but you don't have to. To put these pieces together, let's make sure they're in the right order. I'm gonna have Mary and Joseph first, followed by my angels, and then my wise men, and lastly, the town of Bethlehem. I'm turning my pieces over so that I can put them together. Now, to do this step, you're gonna need to grab some tape. I have black electrical tape here that I'm going to use. You could use electrical tape or scotch tape, whatever you've got handy. Line up your first two pieces so that the edge is together. Take your piece of tape and run it from the very top all the way down to the bottom. Then cut off the bottom. Do this for the next two pieces. Line up the edges and run your tape right down the line. Same thing for, you guessed it, the last piece.
Now this next part's a little tricky, so you may need to get a parent's help. We're going to fold these pieces together and meet up our last edge. Then we'll take a piece of tape and run it along the inside of our lantern so that it stands up like this. To do that, cut your piece down to size first. I use this to measure to see how long of a piece I need. I'm going to run it along this edge first, matching it up at the bottom, but making sure I don't accidentally stick it to my table. Then curve the whole piece around and meet on the other side. Press up and under with your hand on the underside and your hand on top, like you're making a sandwich with your hands. Open it up and you're all done! Our little votive candle holder is ready to be lit. Let's see what it looks like when it's all lit up. What a beautiful craft. We hope you enjoyed today's craft, friends. Bye. Nice job on your craft, friends. Now let's head on over to our friends at Magic Box Kids. We're going to sing a Christmas carol about the three wise men called We Three Kings of Orient Are. It's one of my favorite carols. If you know it, sing along. of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar field and fountain moor and mountain following yonder star Lamb's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, seizing never over us all to reign.
is mine, its bitter perfume Breeds a life of gathering gloom Sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying Sealed in a stone cold tomb much friends for joining me on this Bible box adventure. It was wonderful bringing the stories of God to you every week and I hope you'll join us back again in the spring when Bible box returns. Until then have a safe and wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Before we go let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Sometimes it's hard for us to see the stars that appear in the sky telling us that it's time for us to go. Sometimes we don't want to go where the journey is long and hard. But give us the faith that you gave the wise men that there's something that star is leading us to. And if we would just follow, we'll find something miraculous. Amen. All right, friends, we'll see you soon in spring when Bible Box returns. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas!